So the scripture reading is from Romans 8, verses 18 to 30, and Paul writes this to those suffering under persecution. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those, those whom he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. Here we gather in worship, in person, spaced out, with masks on, or online. Almost a year to the day that we first kept those doors locked on a Sunday morning and said, for the safety of all involved, we will be the church in a new way, in an online way. We will experience family and community and connection in ways different than maybe any of us had ever done so in our lifetimes before. And we come to today still in some of those same places, still not quite being where we'd like to be as far as fully embracing one another as far as sharing space with one another and eating and drinking and fellowshipping and having fun. And yet, I pray, and I believe it is Paul's prayer and hope for us today, in these words from the letter to the Romans, that we have and will continue to live in hope. For you see, I suspect over the course of the last year, if you're anything at all like me, it's not always been easy. It's been downright hard or challenging. That some of these words that Paul writes here, that we resonate with. That our spirit almost groans within us because we know not how we ought to pray, because things are not as we would want them to be, because we see 
people around us and those whom we deeply care for, struggling, longing for relationship, are struggling with mental health concerns, are struggling with physical health concerns related to the pandemic or otherwise, or our youth who are struggling to engage through online school, or their teachers or their parents who are practically at their wit's end. And so what does Paul say to them or to us today? He writes these words, for who hopes in what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Patience is one of those virtues that are included with the fruit of the Spirit in some of Paul's other writings that may or may not be the strongest virtue for some of us. And yet, as people of faith who face suffering, that it is exactly one of the virtues that God calls us to. But God calls us to this virtue of patience, not to sit by willy-nilly and without a care in the world, but with a patience and a deep confidence and a conviction that our Lord Jesus cares for us, that the Lord Jesus cares for those family members, those friends, and those neighbors of ours, that we and they too might have hope. For Paul writes this letter not to a church that is dealing with a pandemic. Paul writes this letter to a church that knows other struggles, that knows other difficulties. Paul writes this letter to you and to me at a time that, sure, may involve a pandemic, but maybe you've heard or read these verses previously when suffering was present in your life. You've maybe heard or read these words of Paul as encouragement for you and for me when suffering and the last thing we wanted to have was patience and where the hardest thing for us to find was hope, where that spirit did groan within us, longing for the Lord to bring us out of it. And so I ask you today, where is your hope meter? Where is that faith of yours, knowing the pre present sufferings of this day. And beyond that, as Paul writes this letter to the Romans, he, he shapes it in the context of a hurting and even an evil world around it and maybe a hurting and evil world around us, knowing that we ourselves are tempted and prone to rather than have patience, to have outbursts, rather than to have grace for our neighbors and our enemies, to seek to condemn them and to call them out. And in this letter to the Romans, Paul urges us as Christians to be different. Paul urges us as Christians to seek not after the things of this world, but to seek for the things that make for the kingdom of God here and throughout eternity. It ain't easy. We are all guilty of sin and falling into those temptations of that impatience or of those outbursts. 
But yet, we have come to know a one who forgives us. We pray that we have come to know and experience, be it through his holy church or through some of the relationships that we've built and found, that we've received grace when we've not been patient or when we've sought after our own things. And so today, church, as the Lord Jesus offers us this grace, Paul writes in this letter to the Romans that this is great, that this grace is not for our own selves. It's not for us to keep and hold tight to and I'm more special than somebody else. But he urges us that this grace and this hope that we have come to know is what our neighbor needs is what our family members need, is what so many need during times of suffering and trouble. And so I ask you today, having received this grace, knowing and hearing and I pray believing again and being assured in this hope for what we do not see, that you might carry that hope and be that example for someone else. For as Paul writes in chapter 12 of this same letter, he gives us some practical application, right? Those of you that have maybe read this letter to the Romans, there's a lot of theology even in what we read today, and our eyes can get a little crossed sometimes. But maybe these are the words that Paul wants us to practically live out. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection and outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal and be ardent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope and be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer and contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the Lord. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not pay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. That's Romans 12, 9 through 17, if that strikes a chord at all with you. If you want to go back to, as we continue to persevere through this time of suffering, as we might seek for hope, and the glory that someday Jesus will reveal to us, that we might be empowered and emboldened by the Spirit to live in this way, to be witnesses who pick up the phone and reach out and show love to those who might not have this hope, to be those who would sit down and write out a card and send a note of encouragement, to be those who might prepare a meal or provide food for those who might not know or believe in this hope, and in many other ways that you might convey this hope to others, because the mystery that Jesus talks about, that we hear time and again, that even as our inclination in suffering is to turn inward and to say, woe is me, and to think about all of our inconveniences. By turning outward, by looking to the other, by serving the other and having grace for the other, it's in our giving that we receive. It's in our giving that our anxiety or concern of this day lifts up the spirits of others and too lifts up our spirits. 
Brothers and sisters, this is the good news. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we know suffering today, and we have known suffering in the past. We think of or call to mind those around us, maybe before whom we have prayed earnestly and sincerely, who are also suffering, that they too, as we might, find hope. Lord Jesus, may this good news and hope of yours spur us on to not turn inward and focus on our worries and our anxieties, but help us to rise above to the glory that you will reveal, to the joy and the hope and the promise that you have for us and for this world that you so love. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, and all God's people say,